In a previous video, I went over basic product entry in ASP.NET Storefront, and in this video I'd like to get into more detail about entering product data and what fields do what. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the back end of the site, and I'm just going to be jumping back and forth between the back end product entry screen and the front end to see what, what changes are, are happening. So you can kind of see what's available in ASP.NET Storefront. So the first thing I wanted to explain was the relationship between products and product variants. Um, one way to look at it here is over on the left hand side, you'll see that we're on the Pocket Monster product and every product in ASP.NET Storefront has at least one variant underneath it. So if you open up the product you're working with, uh, you should see at least one unnamed variant underneath it. And if you go to the variant screen for this product, you'll see it here in this list. Now you can have multiple variants, and what that allows you to do is to have multiple price points for a single product. Um, uh, one common example is, uh, is a, a video. Often times people have a movie that they sell but they may sell it in three different formats. So they may sell it in a Blu-ray version, a VHS version, and a DVD version. So you might have different variants to, to uh, accommodate all of those options. Um, so I will cover variants in this video. Um, it's just going to be a simple variant or a single variant product that we're going to go over today. Um, so we will jump down to the variant level after I work through all of the different product fields. So I'm going to go back up to the product product level. Another way to get to that screen is the show variants link, by the way. Okay, so what I'd like to do is just work my way down through each of, each of these fields and work our way across through each of these tabs and, and give you a brief explanation of what each of these options does for you. So most of them are pretty pretty self-explanatory, like name is obviously the product's name. Uh, the product type is, is a little bit different. Uh, you'll usually want to use a generic product. Um, really the exception here is if you're trying to set up a gift card type product, um, but for the most part you'll almost always want to use generic product for your product type. Uh, manufacturer you can see is a required field, so you'll have to choose a manufacturer for your product. That's pretty, pretty straightforward as well. Uh, you can also map products up to distributors if you want to, but you can see there's no star. It's not a required field, um, but this allows you to associate your products with your distributors if you want. SKU is also an optional field. It's, it's just, uh, just a product SKU. You, you can actually search by SKU. So if you do use SKUs, it's it's handy to search by up here in the search box or on the front end of the site in the search box. Um, it, it's, like I said, it's optional and it doesn't show in all product XML packages. So what I mean by that is it doesn't always show on the front end of the website. Uh, this particular XML package is the simple product XML package and you can see it does not show SKU. And, and some of these options That'll apply to a lot of things. It just depends on which XML package you use and whether or not that data will show on the front end. And if you don't understand XML packages, uh, don't worry about it. I'm about to get into that. So uh, published, yes or no, that's whether or not the product shows on the website. So by default, it's going to be yes. If you turn that off and then update the product, we go out to the front end and I'll, I'll refresh and you'll see now you, you can no longer get to that product and in fact if I go to the category page it doesn't show there either. So I'll publish this product again. And there it is. So that's published and unpublished. Google Checkout allowed. Um, if you do use Google Checkout, you can specify which products do and don't allow Google Checkout. Uh, most people just use yes, and that is the default option. 
and if you're not using Google Checkout I would just leave it on yes um, that way if you do ever decide to turn that on you can all of your products will work with Google Checkout okay so display format XML package is is a somewhat complicated concept it's it's really just the XML package is is a file that sits up on your website and it does a couple of things it it controls the display of your product page in this case and it also controls the functionality that's available on that product page so if I take a look out here you can see this is the simple product XML package that we've got selected from this drop-down and it looks one way and I could choose a different XML package and I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, variants in right bar is another good option and I'm going to update that. So if you go to the front end of the product page, you'll see, just kind of remember what this looks like, and I'll hit refresh. And you'll see some minor changes here, um, some things shifted. Now you can see skew, um, and, and some of the elements on the page moved around a bit. Um, these two XML packages are pretty close to each other, but if I choose a bit more drastic one, you'll see see some more differences uh, tabbed UI for example puts a tabbed product information on the front end so this is a, a different XML package and most of the same same options are available here it puts the images on a, a different tab and allows related products to show over here if you do use related products I'm just going to switch that back to simple product for now. Uh, the simple product XML package will only support single variant products. In other words, simple products. Um, if you go to a multiple variant product, you're going to want to choose one of these XML packages that has variants in the name. So variants in drop down is a good one. Um, variants in right bar is another one. Um, variants in right bar, as you can see, as I showed you earlier, will actually support either a simple product or multiple. But if you, if you have any questions, just obviously just try it out and see what happens. Uh, page size is really only used if you do have multiple variants. Uh, you can determine how many, uh, how many variants will show on the product page if you use like a grid layout. And you can see here, it, it may be used by the XML package displaying this page. Um, so really, it, it may or may not be used by the XML package that you choose here. And if it does have a page size, this would be how many columns your table would have in it. All right, so tax class. Uh, in a default installation, you get five different tax classes set up, just kind of to demonstrate how tax classes work. Uh, by default, goods will be selected. This allows you to apply different tax rates to different types of products. So you can actually set up your tax information up here under configuration, taxes, and you can add and remove product tax classes here and set them up by state, country, or zip code in, in tax tables under these three links, depending on which one of those you want to do quantity discount table this is for you can see if I drop this down there's nothing available here uh, that's because this store is is a brand new one and it doesn't have any quantity discount table set up um, most people don't use this feature but but it's for bulk discounts so if you have a product and you want to offer a discount when someone buys uh, say five between five and ten you get a slight discount and from 10 to 20 you get another price level and as you buy more products you get a better discount uh, that's handled through quantity discount tables and those are set up underneath configuration pricing and promotions and quantity discounts right here 